Hi, I'm Jumin Wei, the director of uh, Le Jet Tong Dong, uh, the man who waits. The film is now in uh, Berlin Nationals, and yeah, I'm very happy to share the film to you here. And that's it. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Bord Bobak, and this time we're going to discuss the film The Man Who Wait. Hi, welcome to the Teddy Award. Uh, it's very lovely to have you here with us. Um, can you just start with telling us about the inspiration behind this film? So I think the, the the original inspiration of the film is is come from the place, the um, very um, distinguished place, uh, which is the um, used to be a coal mining, yeah. and now it's become a, a hill, a hill with the the soil that is totally black, mm -hmm. and then the young forest uh, growing from that hill. And then I imagine uh, the encounters between men uh, yeah. that happens that happen on that very distinguished place that um, have the, a strong connection to history of mining. And of course, when we talk about mining, we talk about um, violence, about men, and then how that history, invisible history, uh, transmit in this place and be be visible in the encounters of uh, the men in the film. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was also very interesting to see that the that the entire film was uh, shot on analog uh, film. Mm, what was your motivation behind this choice? Yes, uh, beside the story. Uh, there is also at the very beginning, uh, I decided myself that for this film, in terms of filmmaking uh, medium, I have to to challenge myself to do something that uh, I I didn't do before, which is um, analog filmmaking. Mm, yeah. So, um, and it's, it's, it was a very good chance for me because this film is produced by Le Frenois Studio in France. And they, they they have the facility to to for that for that kind of um, yeah. um, medium, and the process is is very funny because it's so slow and it's yeah. the way of thinking is different. It's not about digital way of thinking and and even the editing. Especially we have many limitations in editing because we have to cut on the movie a lot, and we cut with the sound because. Uh, it's, it's very complicated to to edit a synchronize with yeah. sound, so we decided okay we cut with the sound and then everything we imagine, and but then the final result uh, I I'm quite happy with that because the look of the film is is it looked like if you don't know about this film when you look at it it looked like a film from seventy uh, something like that and I like that kind of feeling. Yeah, you definitely had like uh, a bit of a. Um, a feel of of past times because of of the materiality of of the film. Um, so the narrative seems to be paralleling for the first uh, view to completely separate storylines. However, as we go deeper and deeper into the movie, it becomes more and more apparent that these storylines have a lot uh, in common and they are actually like very much connected. So can you tell us a bit about this structural element of the of the narrative? Yes, I'm I'm interested in the how our desire, in this case sexual desire, uh, transform into something that um, that uh, how to say, for example, in this film, first we see uh, that landscape, and then we see. A man is waiting. We don't know what he's waiting for. And then 
we start to know slowly that he waiting for another man for yeah. for for yeah, for physical pleasure let's say that yeah and then but then at the mid of the film that that um that sensation that desire it transforms itself into something that actually is connected to the place mm -hmm. the the place this this place have the have the connected to the family of one of the men because his father used to be a coal miner and he worked here so for him this place remind him of his father yeah and then we we also have a story like of uh, of the third man the the um, very um, mysterious yeah. man that man we understand that he's he's here because this place for now is his home because he has no home so he stay in the forest and and then we we because of that encounter because of maybe just because of the look that he look at the two men having sex in in this place where is his home? I don't know because I, I, that 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 man for me he's is 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 clear for me that I don't want to make sure that he's gay or not. It's yeah. more about the desire, uh, you know, that 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 from because for him this place is the place to to live to a shelter for him. But then yeah. after that encounter, it transformed into a place for sexual desire. So the there are many. I think there are kind of parallel between two different desires. First, the um, desire, the need for for sex, and then the need for for home. And then how 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 that how how could they cross each other? That's that that I think that's the interesting of uh, this film. Yeah? Yeah, we will definitely talk about home uh, a bit later. But first, I would like to ask you about um, the aspect of voyeurism here, because from this third uh, male character, there is, of course, a bit of this voyeuristic, um, voyeuristic desire happening, but it also somehow translates through your camera work. And of course, it also complicates our position as viewers of the film. So can you tell us a bit about that? It's funny. I think uh, I don't, I'm not really aware of that, but I think, yes, this, this kind of, um, how to say, we like to look at the other intimacy. And in the idea of itself of, uh, of uh, cruising, you know, of that. Um, yeah. Uh, in that forest, in the public, uh, in a public place, it's, it's kind of uh, how to say a combination of excitement that you you will be look, but at the same time you you go there because you you want to be seen by the other and you want right. to look at the other because uh, something will happen when two people looking at other. So for me, and in this film. Uh, the only connection between the two storyline between the third man and the, the two other men is that by the look from the distance mm -hmm. and and for me it's more like an accident for for the third man to 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 see that yeah to see the, the two other having says but that um, that encounter that unexpected look is uh, it trigger in him something 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 that maybe he's he's not a, he's not aware of before mm -hmm. and and for the camera this film the camera it for me the cam it's very important that the camera stay close to them yeah. to that the camera will not avoid the the brutality in a way and um, the, how to how to say that the the very uh, I mean those the, the, those scenes in the film. Yes, I want to show it directly. I don't want to show it um, in the distance. I want. Yeah, it, it's like somehow you have the audience are forced to see it. Um, 
Yeah. And for me, it's important because I want to create that very strong connection of bodies. And for that, we need to see it uh, closely. Yeah. So that was your motivation behind also including very explicit uh, yeah. content in the film. Yeah. Because yeah. for me, they are not uh, explicit. For me, they are yeah. something... <laughs> There's something that uh, we don't see much in cinema, but yeah, it's there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, of course, it's like a quite natural occurrence, obviously. Uh, but yes, it's definitely something that um, that is not necessarily easy to include in cinema today for many multiple reasons. Is it going to be marketable? Is it going to be mm -hmm. like too much for audiences? So that's why... I felt that it was very interesting. I think it really served the storyline. Um, and it was also very powerful that that we have these images because because it was also handled in a very neutral way. It was not, I don't know, over... Um, it was not a spectacle in, in any sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so sexuality. We talked, we, you already touched upon uh, this a bit. It also feels like that it's kind of a transformative vehicle in the film. Um, can you talk about your approach to sexuality in the film? Yes, from, from in this film, I want to, yeah, to, to say something clear about that, about um, the sexuality between uh, strangers, between, the, 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 between men that who, yeah. who don't know each other and who will not see each other after probably. So, for sexuality, is for me, it had to be um, close. It had to be really direct. I don't want mm -hmm. to avoid that. For me, it's important. But then, um, it's always come with the the characters. The, so for here, I'm interested in the the uh, old men. You know, like how. Because um, it's so easy and to, to imagine um, uh, two young men uh, mm -hmm. having sex. Uh, in a way, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, how to say, it's kind of, uh, we see that every time already. Yeah. So here, how, how, how two old bodies um, um, interact in this uh, action. So for example, there is the scene that when, um, when, when the second man is sucking the, the other one. Yeah. So it's quite long, uh, that, sh that shot and it's close up. At the beginning, we, we approach that, that scene in the sexual way, but then there's a moment that, um, that the, the first man takes, takes off the heart of the second man. Mm -hmm. And from the camera angle, what we see is the, his, his head, uh, a burnt head, you know, without hair. Right. And suddenly it transforms into the feeling of the old body that is so fragile and it yeah. has something that um, is kind of sad in a way because we know this body is getting old and at the same time he, he yeah. So, yes, it had to be direct, but there is some kind of uh, underlying of sadness, of uh, vulnerability of uh, old bodies. Mm -hmm. That for me is very important. Yeah, it was very interesting and refreshing to to see a different um, portrayal of yeah, as you said, it's we are quite accustomed to see young performers in these kind of scenes, and it was I think it was very bold to to see. But I also felt that it really connects to the storyline that it's two older protagonists that we that we see. Um, yes, um, we will go into that direction as well, how history connects to this. But I also felt interesting in these relationships that there is an element of anonymity. And this, was, and this also seemed very, very crucial. Um, so what was your aim with that? Uh, uh, it's interesting because in the film, the, all of the three characters have no name. Yeah, and we don't know what is their name, and it's, it's, I think it's not it's not really important for them that that we know their name. And here the the, the anonymity is 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 uh, is interesting because it transforms in a way that it has so many names, 
like um, the ending scenes when the uh, there are the men asking the, uh, the man that what is your name and he, he suddenly in a very unexpected way he say a lot of names and how to say that I think in a way it's real it's real that in this kind of uh, encounter in real life we will not say our name sure. we want to keep it um, uh, private but then by saying a lot of names um, it say something more like it's not only that he, he wants to keep his name in private but also he maybe it's, it's all of the men that he met in the past we don't know but um, but it's like something ambiguous in between that um, that uh, to have no name is actually that to have many names in a way yeah 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 interesting um um, yes, so being alone and trying to connect with others, it's also part of this film. And I mean, in the current situation, that definitely gains a whole new layer um, to this. Um, can you talk a bit about this aspect of the film? Yeah, I think uh, with this um, new life, uh, yes, the film will be seen in a different way. That those kind of, I don't know how to say, but it's the, it's, I'm, yeah, they are, they are lonely, I think they are lonely, man. Um, especially the, um, the third one, the one who lived there. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, I have to say, it's sad, it's sad because, um, um, I don't know. I don't know that. But I mean, maybe it's difficult for for us to to really be connected. Maybe it's it's easy to it's easier to 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 be connected uh, in terms of body. I mean, like uh, yes, in this film, it's a sexual contact. But uh, how we can share our sadness, our um, longing from for home, for example, is is difficult. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah. it's, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, it was it was it was definitely interesting to see in this particular time, this film with with this particular topic and and element in it. Um, yes. So we already touched upon home, um, and I felt like it also connected with uh, with the topic of migration in this. And home is a central topic uh, for you in your artistic practice as well. Uh, can you tell us about about this? Yes, I think um, yeah, you you sum up very clear. Yeah, because it's, it's always in my practice the 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 idea and memories about home. Yeah. So yeah, I want to connect uh, somehow in this film to even though this film is my first film that uh, was shot outside Vietnam, my yeah. home country, and it speak French. So I feel very alien, alienated in a way, but it's, it's a, it was a very interesting experience to do film in such a way. And in this film, I think the, 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 the issue of migration, it is something that is it's even before the film starts that um, the place, the hill, the, the, the hill of that mining, coal mining that we see now actually is were built by, uh, by a lot of, uh, how to say, migrate, yeah. The, the people who migrated from different places, yeah. because especially Italian, because in the past, a lot of Italian, they go to France or Belgium to, to, to work in coal mine. And, and then, that's a story of the past, but it's created the, lo the, the place for us to see now, this very special place. Yeah. And then the story of this man who also, maybe he just migrated to this place, to this country from somewhere very far away. And then the circulation of, of that, of uh, traveling, of moving. And 
And yeah, of course, there also the circulation of desire. So they they go together. Yeah. And yeah, for me, for me personally, I I, I for me it's, it's very connected in a strange and sometimes bizarre way that how longing for sex and longing for home. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but they they are connected in a mysterious way for me. And in this film and in the other film too, I try to to. To say something about this connection. Yeah, yeah, that, that was very interesting to see. Um, there is a transgenerational aspect to the movie. There are multiple histories coming to the surface, and in a way, we could read the film as a sort of historiographic attempt. Um, how do you see that? What what can you say about about this? Do you mean about um, family, the history of... Uh... Yeah, exactly, that there are multiple histories coming to the surface through these through these encounters that we see in, in the film. Mm, I'm, again, it's, it, it's just my personal feeling that uh, there is a, such a very, um, in a way, a central connection between son and father yeah yeah that's what we call her maybe a family heritage so in this film uh, there is a moment that uh, um, a character said that he think that his father was gay too but uh, right. uh, it's still ambiguous but what i would like to convey in that that sense that um there are so many hidden there's so many uh how to say yeah repress yeah repression yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah in in the past in the past that even now is it continue it's continue in this moment that that uh, mm, there is in a way disconnected to between the the generation between him and his father yeah maybe because of that his hidden story um I don't know, but uh, there's always the connection for me between uh, son and father in this in this imagination. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great. Well, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, sharing uh, some insights about the film. Uh, it was very lovely um, talking to you, and I wish you all the best for the rest of the Berlinale. Thank you.